Well, let me start by saying that we've got to get past the peak here. We're not past it in Illinois. Um, I'm hoping that that peak will come, as some of the models show, in the middle of May. And then, as the president's plan for reopening even says, you've got to have a number of days in a row. I think his suggests 14 days of numbers going down. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, in the meantime, you know, we've, our schools are closed, and we're looking at making some alterations to our stay-at-home order so that we can maybe loosen up a little bit here and there, but also looking at, you know, where people ought to wear masks and where we ought to require it. And, and as I mentioned in the introduction there, you've been going to great lengths to try to get what you need in terms of PPE, those masks to hospital workers. Tell us about th this sort of secreted, secretive deal you had to broker with China and how and whether the White House got involved. Well, it's funny it's being described that way. But uh, look, what, what happened was, you know, unfortunately, as you know, the market, uh, it's the Wild West out there, I've always said. And we're competing against other states and other countries and the United States government. And so what's happened apparently in some other states is that the federal government has seized shipments as they've arrived that states have ordered. Uh, and as a result, states have had to go find other ways to acquire things, uh, trying to go around the federal government. Uh, and so that's all we did. We, we contracted with a private company to have those goods delivered. We had ordered them, bought them, uh, and just needed them to be delivered to uh, Chicago, to O'Hare. And so we, we got them. And, you know, the last flight or the second flight uh, arrived at 430 this morning. Are you having active fights with the, the administration about getting access to that equipment to your state? You know, not anymore. I have certainly asked for everything that we've needed. The federal government really hasn't delivered all that it has said it would. We've gotten about 3 percent of all the PPE that we asked for from the federal government's stockpile. Um, many other states would tell you the same things happened to them, just a fraction that they've received of the requests they've made. We received some ventilators, which was very helpful from the federal government, about 600 total in our state from the feds. Uh, and then, very importantly, the Army and the Army Corps of Engineers, together with FEMA and HHS, worked with our local labor unions and in our McCormick Place Convention Center to build out an alternate care facility that, if our hospitals overflow, we'll be able to manage as many as 3,000 patients there. And I've had, I have friends who are doctors there who have volunteered for that effort and so far, luckily, have not had to go in. Secretary Pritzker, uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing, the Supposed Illinois COVID-19 Response Fund and the sort of interesting private-public sector partnerships that, that you're focused on. Well, this is really an all-hands-on-deck moment. Millions of people across the nation and in Illinois particularly are really feeling real and significant pain due to this terrible crisis. You've seen the lines of folks waiting in for food banks across the nation. And we have so many millions of people out of work and most and many, way too many who cannot afford basic needs. And so uh, the governor asked me if I would um, chair and create something called the Illinois COVID Response Fund, which I've really been honored to lead and to set up with a whole team of people from across the state. We've raised over $30 million to help uh, with very basic needs, food, shelter, diapers, health care, utilities. So far, we've dispersed about $5.6 million to 30 nonprofit organizations across the state. And this week, another round of grants will go out such that 100 percent of the state will be reaching more than 1.7 million people thus far through this assistance. And I just encourage anybody who has the capacity even to give a dollar or $5 we're really putting the money to good work, um, whether it's helping seniors, helping those who need food, those who need shelter, uh, those who are suffering from domestic abuse. It's really uh, mm -hmm. a very painful time out there, and we're doing our best to help really as many people from Illinois as we can. Secretary Pritzker, do you think this crisis will alter the debate in the U.S. and, and public opinion in the U.S. for, for the need for a broader safety net, perhaps uh, more broad and all-encompassing free health care? Well, you know, I've been talking about the need to build a 21st century safety net for quite a while. We need a health care system. We need a 
SNAP funding so that we know that all of our citizens and our children can have access to food. We need to make sure unemployment insurance is working for all Americans, particularly during this time of crisis. And my goodness, we need broadband access. We need broadband access all over our country. And you're seeing really the challenge that so many of our students are facing in different parts of our state where there isn't uh, ubiquitous coverage. And so they're not able to access uh, their educational uh, uh, system. So yes, I do think our social safety net needs an overhaul and um, a modern economy like ours ought to be able to provide that. Um, Governor, I wanted to go back to the topic of, of reopening the economy, if, if I may. And uh, the U.S. is such a brilliantly large and, and diverse country, but that's also meant there's been different pace of flattening of the curves as it relates to COVID. Uh, to, to what extent does that concern you, that uh, even if one state might be ready to reopen without shutting its borders, which uh, is, is, is not really being considered, I don't think, at the moment, Will that not automatically lead to re-steepenings of the curves, whether it's uh, immediately in that state or another one nearby? Well, it's true that I would have preferred to have a national strategy put in place. But lacking that, you know, here in the Midwest, I've uh, worked together with governors from the surrounding states, most of the surrounding states, uh, to try to, you know, put together a plan uh, that would work for each of us based on a common set of principles uh, for how to reopen the economy. Uh, we, of course, have so many people who are out of work now and so many businesses that are suffering. And we've tr tried to provide state aid. We need much more federal aid, and I'm hoping that that bill will pass very shortly so that we can expand the PPP program. But um, overall, look, it is true that it is worrisome if you've got one state that's on its way up to its peak and another state that's on its way you know, past the peak uh, and that you have cross-border, you know, travel, that's going to happen. But this is a free country, and I think what we need to do is all at least, uh, you know, take, uh, you know, a common set of principles and work with those. And I've said what we need broadly is testing. We need to make sure we have contact tracing, and then we need a treatment. And two of those three are in the control of the governors and the federal government, if they will help. Uh, and then, of course, we need widespread availability of PPE. But, but the, the research that will lead to a treatment, that is so vitally important. And I'm prayerful that we'll end up with a, uh, one of the 70 treatments that, that are in trials right now mm -hmm. as uh, something that will keep people out of the hospital. I you mentioned, Governor, the need for state aid, though you've come under a little fire for, from a request from, your, uh, from the Illinois Senate to Congress asking for $10 billion of that aid to go to help fund Illinois pensions, which is a problem that, that your state has had well before COVID-19. How do you respond to that, and particularly some of the sharp criticism that you've received from the local papers? Well, I didn't write that letter uh, to start with, but... Um, look, what I have asked the federal government for is the same thing that the other states have asked for, which is we need direct aid to the states because all of us, all of us have revenue shortfalls as a result of what's happened to the economy. And all of us have challenges providing more and more services that are needed as the economy has basically shut down. So with that kind of a hole in everybody's budget, it seems to me it makes sense if we want to maintain people, uh, you know, get to make sure they get their jobs back, to make sure they can uh, afford to stay in their homes and, and uh, you know, afford to put meals on the table. Um, we need to get aid from the federal government. It's the, really the only way to do it at this point. Thank you both for joining us to talk about what's happening in Illinois. Governor J.B. Pritzker and Sister Penny Pritzker, the former Commerce Secretary of the U.S. Up next on the show.